the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, which has seen some great games and is ready for another. And the winner will receive this prestigious trophy. Great faces have shown here at the Cotton Bowl down through the years, like Arkansas's Lance Allworth, the great running back from SMU, Kyle Roach. Ernie Davis, the running back from Syracuse. And the great Navy quarterback, Roger Staubach. The left-hander from Alabama, Kenny Stabler. And Notre Dame quarterback, Joe Theismann. And today, of course, SMU's Eric Dickerson and his running mate in the Pony Express, Greg James. And Pittsburgh quarterback, Dan Marino. This is the 47th annual Cotton Bowl Classic. The Pitt Panthers versus the SMU Mustangs. And the stage is set here at the Cotton Bowl, the football classic that began on January 1st, 1937. It would provide Texas with a sports spectacle of its very own. And it has become just that. Big games on New Year's Day down through the years. Frequently games that had national implications. Coming in here this afternoon, we have two football teams, Pittsburgh and SMU. And here come the Pitt Panthers onto the field for the first time at the Cotton Bowl. The Pitt Panthers were picked by everybody before the season to win the national championship. They stayed undefeated until they lost to Notre Dame. Subsequently, they also lost to Penn State. They've won nine and lost two. Bo Spazio is completing his first year as head coach of the Panthers with a record of nine and two, and it is, of course, the first time that Spazio has taken his team to the Cotton Bowl. And now we await the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University. They are based in Dallas. The campus is right here in Dallas, and here they come, the Mustangs! the Southwest Conference Championship in consecutive season. They are undefeated. They stayed undefeated untied in the final game of the year when they were tied by Arkansas 17-17. Bobby Collins, who came from Southern Mississippi, has completed his first year as head coach at SMU, and it is, of course, the first time that he has taken them to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson, and down through the years, we've had great games here at the Cotton Bowl that have had national implications. We've had many national championships but we're settled right here. Coming into this ball game, as we know, in the nation, there are only two undefeated teams, Georgia. They play Penn State later, and the SMU here, as they will be meeting Pittsburgh. What would happen if Georgia got defeated, and if the Southern Methodist Mustangs were to remain undefeated? We'd have only one undefeated team. How would that affect the national championship? Well, we asked Bobby Collins, the head coach at SMU, and he said, my players think they're playing for the national championship. Now to find out more about this football game, let's join our colleague Pat Hayden. What football game would we have? Well, think, uh, Lindsay, I think we're all expecting a big offensive game, but we have to remember that both of these teams have had four to five weeks to prepare for this game, so I think the key is, is the offense ability to adjust to the new defense they'll see, that they'll see today. All right, let's be specific now. What do you think SMU has to do to win? Lindsay, I think the first thing, Lance McElhaney, their quarterback, wants to have an effective day passing the game. Now, I'm not saying that he should throw the ball 30 times, but when he does, he needs to be successful, and by doing so, it makes it much easier for Dickinson and James to find an opening to run through. Secondly, they must force Pitt to run the football. Pitt is best at throwing the ball, and that's what they want to do. But by mixing up the coverage and putting pressure on Marino and defending well, Pitt will run the ball. All right, that's what uh, they want Pitt to do. What do you think Pitt will do? Well, I think what Pitt really needs to do is force McElhaney to keep the ball on the option. The best way to defend against Dickerson and James is to keep the ball away from him. And secondly, Dan Marino must be patient. He can't force the ball or try to do too much. If he makes the proper reads and the correct throws, he's very difficult to defend. All right. 
but now to get a different perspective on the game, let's check in with the fellow we'll be checking in with all day long, our colleague, Pat O'Brien. Pat? Thank you, Lindsay. You know, Pat Hayden was talking about what Pittsburgh needs to do. There's another consideration here. Pittsburgh has had a very, very tough year. You know, they came into the season expected to be number one, expected to be a national champion, expected to have a Heisman Trophy winner. None of that happened. Then some controversy early in December. The cornerback, Tim Lewis, confided to a Dallas newspaper reporter that he didn't think the team had championship discipline. Of course, this did nothing for the pride and the spirit of the team. In fact, he even singled out a couple players and said they didn't uh, perform at the championship discipline as well. And then a tragedy happened the day before the team was to arrive here in Dallas for the Cotton Bowl. Uh, the linebacker, Todd Becker, died tragically in an accident following a party on campus. So it has been indeed a very, very tough season. And I would think, Pat and Lindsay, that uh, they'd like to win today just to end it up on a high note. All right, Pat O'Brien. We hope that sort of sets it up for you out there for the 47th annual Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Pittsburgh versus Southern Methodist University. Horses, it's a great place to start. And by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. has won the toss and they have elected to receive and so it'll be Whit Smith set to kick it off dropping back deep Tim Lewis and Barry Compton to receive it yards this year and is their leading receiver Lindsay Joe McCall of course the fullback these days and Clint Wilson is starting at tight end as John Brown last year's hero in the Sugar Bowl is out of action Arena waits for the snap by the draw play to McCall do it all, McCall gets out to the 35-yard line. Back on Marino to throw into. Second down play here. Marino with his first pass of the day, but he doesn't get it off yet. Well, he's still alive and hits the deck with a gain of about two. I think he's a yard short of the first down. And lucky to be alive, Michael. Oh, they're in the one setback situation. Pushing across, that's Thomas from the wing right. And it is completed across the 50-yard line. Taken by Barry Compton, and he is down at the 46. A 13-yard pickup on the play. Eddie Radford from his right corner came in to make the tackle and came here this year. Third down, three yards to go. Moreno, incomplete. A sliding Barry Compton could not get to it. Who has averaged 36.4? And so they snapped it to the short man, and it was taken there by Dukovic. And Dukovic has picked up the first and ten. Look up and on setback. Moreno goes a screen up. Taken by McCall, and McCall is at the 20, 15. Do it all, McCall. And he is out of bounds at the one-yard line. Pittsburgh Panthers, we see them throw the ball down through. We see them run the ball uh, very well. And here's the little screen pass to number 34, Joe McCall, to avoid the rush. Now, we've seen Reno under a little pressure so far. How do you relieve the pressure? You throw such things as screen passes. And here's one of Joe McCall. He brings down all the way to the one-yard line. McCall did not get in. He did not get in. Gary Moten was the linebacker who was there. He fumbled the ball, and it's been recovered by Southern Methodist University. Right there, here's another look. Good penetration by the SMU defense. He's trying to go over the top, and I think he's more concerned with jumping. He dropped the ball before he jumped, actually. It's on the ground. The SMU make the recovery. They've got the ball on their own one-yard line. Hands and SMU recovery. And it was Wes Hopkins who recovered for SMU. They run out of a power eye. Just keep it on the ground, but move it out there to the nine-yard line. Southern Methodist had Dickerson carrying on their first play. He's number 19. Now here are the offensive backs and receivers, Pat. McElhenney is the real the key there, the way he gets the ball to the option on Dickerson and James. Dickerson and James alternate by series. It's still Dickerson in there at the tailback now as they set up in the, app, the power high formation. Greg James is in there as well. In this particular formation, they have them both hit. It's Dickerson. Dickerson gets out there to the 10-yard line. Third down and a yard to go. Need a yard just to keep it alive down here. He's got the first and ten for the ponies. 
They've moved it out to the 14-yard line. Yeah, the interior line of that Pittsburgh line, that uh, Pelosi and Moss, that's the strength of that defensive line. And the linebackers? They have a big job in, in the defending against the option today. As, and the deep back. As those defensive backs do, they're going to get a lot of man-to-man -man coverage when you're playing against an option team. So Troy Hill and Tim Lewis have their hands full. And at the moment, they're in the eye formation. Give it to the tailback. They do that a lot all day long. It's Dickerson out there across the 20-yard line. Third down and three yards to go. They have it just across the 20-yard line. Three backs in and eye. They're in the slot right. Michael Henry with the full cover keeps it on the action. And he's got a first and ten for the Ponies. They're at the 26-yard line. This is his fullback this time. Doesn't do that much. It was Kreitz carrying and stopped by Pelusi. Fullback doesn't carry an awful lot in the offensive side of Memphis. This place. It's dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. First and ten for SMU. They have three. Full pivot. Late pitch and Dickerson wasn't looking for it at the moment. He's blocked away, and now the scramble is still on. And it is recovered by SMU. And he's looking at defensive back, and it looks like he's trying to throw the ball. Then he pitches it. You see 19, Eric Dickerson. He was not expecting that pitch. The ball is loose on the ground. He squirts loose again. There's number 63, Pozzoli. He can't keep his footing, and the SMU linemen recover it to keep possession. That's Dickerson. Trying to turn the corner, and he does. 30 and up the sideline, but he couldn't maintain his balance to keep him going out. At the 35, Tom Flynn. Fake the draw. McElhaney looking to throw. And he is going to keep it himself. Trying to get out of bounds up to six. Penalty marker thrown. Doesn't go. There's no love loss between these two teams, Lindsay. As you know, there's been some accusations made by both teams in the papers here during the week. You're going to see the fake here to Dickerson. You don't see McElhaney drop back in the pack pocket much, but he does do a nice job of scrambling here. It gets to the outside. He's trying to get out of bounds at Ray Witherspoon, number nine, clubs him across the head, and it was a good call. That's not call for Here's what Ray Witherspoon. One further look at McElhaney scrambling to his right. Again, trying to pick up as much yardage as he can before he steps out of bounds. And He's out of bounds there, and there's the hit across his head. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. There's the pitch to Dickerson. But he's pulled out. All got away, but was he down already? In the yard line. We've seen some pretty intense hitting here early in the game. Again, here's the pitch to Dickerson. This time he is looking for the football. Breaks one tackle. Number 26, Tim Lewis, comes up. There's the face mask. Good call by the fish who's right there. Through the flag right away. Ball and seeing the ball. Mask, defense, still first down. Face mask on Lewis, puts the ball at the 36-yard line. Motion all the way across. They are back again, Dickerson. And to the 31-yard line, right at the sticks. They'll take a look now for the possible first down. Did, did no real damage. It's, it's, it's an exciting afternoon here. <laughs> McElhinney, McElhinney, McElhinney. The quarterback on the keeper to the 22-yard line. Tackle made by Tom Flett. Yeah, a lot of people defending him. There's nobody there for the quarterback, McElhaney. He turns up field, puts a little move on, and then Tom Flynn's there to make the tackle. The SMU out in the National Football League. That is, again, Dickerson corralled just as he was approaching the 20-yard line. And the tackle was made by Wing Lukowski. It was the ground game. They have run 15 times on this drive. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. You can see the clock running there in the first quarter. Jackie Wilson's in the wide left now. He's number 85. The wide right there is Smith, number 89. Running backs in the back, Bites and Dickerson. Well, Lance McElhinney, the quarterback. McElhinney slips it late. So as a penalty marker on the play as it went out of bounds about the 21. Yardage being stepped off for the penalty. Referee Jimmy Harper. All sides, defense. Oh. Yeah. Michael Henney with the ball to Dickerson. Left side. That second effort might have got the first down. As he burst across the 10-yard line with that last burst of Dickerson. Using that power 
to drive to the seven-yard line. Yogi Jones made the tackle with Pete Short. Second down and goal at the seven. Dickerson just Dickerson has shed the goggles that he wears almost all the time. They're in the power eye formation. Michael Henney. And the ball is free, and Pittsburgh's got it. They got it at the 14-yard line. J.C. Pelusi is on the football. So now, as Pittsburgh did, Southern Methodist has driven the length of the field and given up the football deep. The ball is pitched, actually, and hits the defender's shoulder pad. You're going to see McElhaney come down the line after he fakes the ball here. He's trying to pitch the ball to James, but it goes off the defender's shoulder pad, and you can see the hit that he took right there. On the slot left. And he popped out to the 19-yard line. First pass to Keith Williams. To the tailback. Thomas. Ryan Thomas lost a yard. That's Thomas in motion all the way across. Dan Marino. And it's incomplete. The second quarter, there is no score. Pitt and SMU first and ten. Oh, he's taken by James, Craig James up there to the 49-yard line. Yep, the other part of the Pony Express, number 32, Craig James, he is a little bit, has a little bit more power and a little stronger than Dickerson. He gets a nice hole, bounces off of defender Dan Short, and picks up uh, first down. That's a dead ball, personal foul, defense. I believe that's a second personal foul against Pittsburgh as well. Officials crew from the Southeastern Conference. And James, nowhere. Bill Moss getting in there once again. First man Smith in motion back toward the inside. Michael Henry with a quick pitch to James. He can throw, and he does. To Smith incomplete. Gary Smith, the man for whom it was intended. Tom Flynn, the free safety covering. Here is four for four in third down conversion. Run, 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 run. Break up. Michael Henry, Michael Henry. Incomplete. So it'll bring up a fourth and 13. There's been two drop passes. Should have been caught. That's Thomas. The BT Express to the 20 yard line. Gets it up to the 24. Thomas in the slot. Marino. Compton, and he's got it. And there's a penalty marker back near the line of scrimmage. All Southwest Conference defensive backs of SMU, and Dan Marino's in the pocket, again showing some ability to get loose of the rush, drills the ball to number 19, Barry Compton. This time, Barry catches the ball for a big gain. Here's the coverage. This is what you're, they're trying to do against three wide receivers for the Pitt Panthers. It's a straight zone defense, top of the screen, and right in the middle of the screen now is Barry Compton, who ran, a, who ran an in route and beat Eddie Radford one more time for the big catch. Offense. Fantastic tackle. Moreno, Thomas, out there to the 25-yard line. Lone set back, Dan Moreno. Right back to Thomas. And he got maybe two. Third down and eight yards to go. Thomas in motion across. Dan Moreno. Up the middle of Thomas, diving catch at the 35-yard line, right at the sticks again. Gary Moten, the linebacker, made the tackle. Marino. Marino. Still alive. Diving catch at the 50-yard line by Barry Compton. It's amazing SMU has been being able to put so much pressure on Dan Moreno, but he does a beautiful job once again of avoiding the rush. A la Fran Tarkin, and now he steps back up into the pocket, then delivers the ball right on the money to number 19, Barry Compton, who makes that catch, but he said he was out of bounds. He was out of bounds, so it's an incompletion. Fourth down, and Reggie is in to do the punting. Dupard is back to receive it. That's Reggie Dupard. Penalty marker back near the kicker. Dupard at the 14-yard line to the 15 to the 16-yard line, but there is a flag back at the kicker. That's going to be roughing the kicker. 48-yard punt return three. But the indication...
Right there, you see the ball is clearly away. Here comes some of the SMU team, and there they are, right on top of Reccia. And it's going to be a first down. They've run this lone setback formation most of the ball game. That's McCall back in there now, and that's Thomas in motion across, and that's Marino with the wall. Going long, letting it out, and... Did he hang on? No, he did not. On setback, Marino looking left. Guns that one. In and out of the hands of Dawkins, Julius Dawkins. Number 80. He can't hang on. So Reggio is in the punt again. This time he is not rough. Dupart calls for a fair catch. Let's it go. Oh my, it's out at the pylon. It's out at the pylon inside the one yard line. A 45 yard punt. High formation. On the end zone, McElhenney throwing up the sideline and it is out of bounds. Glenn went after the ball, couldn't get to it. And should hit the end line, it's a safety. But he doesn't. Picks the ball. Vino run back 40, 45, 47, 48, 49. So they will start now. First and 10 to 49, a 46 yard kick with no return. No. Thomas. Ryan Thomas slipped as he started to make the cut. There's a penalty marker on the play. In motion, illegal motion, that's a five-yard penalty. Marino. Moving. Down that sideline, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Can't find any hope. He does not force it this time. We said he must do that. He steps out of the pocket and down. And watch the defensive back. It looks like he's afraid to hit him the way the game's been called. But Danny runs out of bounds there. And didn't get the first down. And in the first half, it's at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Matt Goheny, screen to the left. James has the ball. And he's up to the 25-yard line. There's James. There's James. Across the 31-yard line. Defensive most valuable player of the year, who is here today. And he's going to Craig James. Craig James, and he's got Craig James at the 34 yard line. Down as McElhaney looks to his right. Then he comes back late to Craig James, who's down the middle. He has beaten the defender, the linebacker. And just Tom Flynn, number five, who comes over, recognizes it late to prevent a touchdown. But now the ponies up there in the right formation. Wide receivers left and right. McElhaney with the football. On the draw play, again to James. But this one does not fool the defense of the Pitt Panthers as Krenick, the linebacker, made the tackle. It's time. Michael Henry. Over the middle, James. Dropped the ball. Picked up by Pittsburgh, and they've got it. They have got it. It's Dan Pete Short. Sometimes there's a price to be paid when you catch the ball over the middle. You're going to see McElhaney dump the ball to Craig James, number 32, right over the offensive line of scrimmage. He's looking downfield. There's the dump off to James. And look out, here comes number 59, Yogi Jones. That can ruin your whole new year. I had a coach tell me earlier in the year that he had two kinds of receivers. Those who didn't want to go over the middle and those who weren't going over the middle. And this is the reason why. Another look at Craig James. Yogi Jones makes a hit, and Dan Short is going to recover the fumble. A lot of hitting as Pat O'Brien going on down there today. First and 10 to 36. Marino with the ball. Fake the draw to Thomas. And throws it, and it is complete at the 43-yard line. Got it to McCall. North Carolina by a score of 7 to 6. Marino. Flat. Got the first down, and it's at the 45 yard line of SMU. Marino. And it's Hampton. He's at the 32 yard line. It's another first and 10. Russell Carter on that corner. Made the tackle. He's all southwest coming to pick up of 13 yards on the pass completion. Hopson wants and retreats. McCall. 25, 20, and out of bounds at the 18-yard line. 
intelligent passing day. Here, once again, he looks downfield. He does not force the ball, though. He dumps it off to number 34, Joe McCall, similar to the play, pre play previous. First half, he's number 13 at the close of this game. That 13 will be retired, as were the numbers of Tony Dorsett and Hugh Green. That's the last play. So the ball is spotted at the line of scrimmage, the 18th. Called for long set back here. At Thomas in motion across. That's Marino with the football. Popcorn! He was really popped at the 11-yard line. And the man who popped him was Blaine Smith. All Southwest Conference. Catches in a couple drops today. He's going to catch this ball, which is well thrown, but number 23, Blaine Smith, the All-Southwest Conference free safety. Boom, and you see why he made All-Southwest Conference. He put a hit on Barry Compton that he's going to remember. Down, and two yards to go at the 10. We're going to have a field goal attempt by Eric Schubert. Daniels is holding. It is up. It is no good. It is no good. 27-yard attempt is no good. So no points on the board. Ball changes hands, 50 seconds on the clock, and it'll be spotted at the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Southern Methodist, as Schubert's 27-yard attempt went awry with Daniels holding. The Chevrolet Most Valuable Defensive Player of the Year will be presented. The pageantry on the field here can have all of that coming to work. Jaguar will into that. Dickerson again, he's still alive. 25, Eric Dickerson out to the 30-yard line. Might have just picked up the first down. Tell Wrights is the fullback. McElhenney is the quarterback. Dickerson. He carries it up to the 40-yard line, and time has run out. That's the end of the first half, and there is no score. So we'll return to the Cotton Bowl with our halftime activities after a word about an upcoming show on CBS. We're going to take a look here at the first half stats. This has been really a game for SMU of field position. When they've had field position, Lance McElhaney has thrown the ball and thrown the ball effectively. When they have not, and they've been backed up quite a bit today, they have not thrown the ball well, and he only has 39 yards passing. Pitt has hurt itself with seven penalties. Weather had a lot to do with that one in 1959. TCU in the Air Force. You say those things, and as they say, they pop up there. Eight yeah. yards to go. Holden moves over again to try that. McElhinney on the keeper. And he moved it out for another first down. He's number 89. That's Holden moving over in motion. Now the pitch to James. Greg James. It's a stand-up block by Smith that allowed him to turn the corner, and he moved perched the 50-yard line before he went out of bounds with the assistance of Yogi Jones. James, well, he lost about a yard. J.C. Pelosi from Youngstown, Ohio, and then to make the tackle. Third down and two yards to go with the ball at the 48-yard line. They're in that power eye formation now. James, and I think he got the first down already. He got across the 50-yard line. Greg James on the carry. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. and he has lost a yard. Wayne Glikowski made the tackle. That's the all-time Southwest Conference rushes, and that's interesting. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. McElhinney, overtaken from behind, and has lost all the way back to his own 41-yard line. Pete Short is the man. First sack of the ball game. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 36-yard line now. Dan Marino, number 13, the quarterback. A call is the lone setback. Up to down and out to Compton. Barry Compton. Back to Dwight Collins. Reno to Collins. Got the first down at the 49-yard line. Wes Hopkins, Birmingham, Alabama, made the tackle. At the 45-yard line, Brian Thomas. Set back. Marino. Again to Thomas. I think he got out at the sticks. They reset him and look now. Has he got the first? It's very close. Shit. was the man who made the head-on hit. 
First and ten. He did not make it by much. Penn State. First and ten at the 40-yard line for the Panthers. Moreno completes it to the 35-yard line. Picked up five on the completed pass to do. is carrying. Got it inside the 30-yard line. That'll be another first down. Yard. Thomas. A nifty running got him inside the 20-yard line to the 19. Stopped by Richard Neely. Richard Neely from Highland Park High School right here in Dallas. Moreno moves up. Moves out. 43-yard attempt by Eric Schubert. His longest of the year was 48. He missed from the 27 earlier in this ballgame. And that one is good. So Eric Schubert boots the field goal. That puts Pittsburgh on the scoreboard with 4 minutes, 34 seconds left to play. It is now the Pitt Panthers 3 and the Southern Methodist University Mustangs, nothing. Pressure, he's been that for a long time. He's got the ball again and he gets it out to the 25 yard line at second and five. And second down play, Dickerson again, he's got the first and 10. Across the 30 out to the 32 yard line. Golden moves across, 87. McElhinney has the ball, McElhinney still has the ball. Dickerson throws a block for him, but he doesn't help. Campbell is number two. Greg James is number three. Good company. Smith in motion all the way across. Angelini. Still alive and lofting it up. And completed at the 49-yard line. A leaping catch played by Leach, Bobby Leach. He's a sophomore, he's 5'11", 165 pounds, goes behind the defender, is looking for the ball, comes back for it, goes up and catches the ball in front of the defender. Five. And try the reverse play here now, that's Leach. This one just doesn't work. It went from McElhinney to Dickerson to Leach, and down to the 38 because a fellow named Chris Dolman was there. Pittsburgh is leading 3-0. Bolden moves over to the left side as the tight end. McElhinney. Going long. Heading it out to Leach. And he's got it. And he's out of bounds at the 20 yard line. 17, uh, 47 seconds left in the quarter. 42 yard pickup. Troy Hill with the defender. Well caught. You gotta get an isolated look at number 77, Bobby Leach. He's been their big play receiver, big play man all season long. Again, he beats Troy Hill, number 22, on the coverage. Well thrown ball, goes over his outside shoulder to catch it, and then runs out. Dickerson. Gets it down there to the six yard line. To pressure during the season five times. In the fourth quarter, they were even tied or losing. They are still undefeated. There's Dickerson. Dickerson. Dickerson to the 11 yard line. Eric Dickerson, they give it to him deep in the eye formation. He follows the block of Campbell and Burnett and powers his way down to a third and one situation. Good power football. Again, you're going to see Eric Dickerson come right at you. If you were trying to tackle him, this is what you'd see. A little crease. He finds it. He pops right through. And Yogi Jones and Cranach are there to try to put the stop on him. And the drive that started on the 20-yard line. Michael Henney has the ball. The late pitch on the James. He's at the 10. He's got the first down. He's got the first down as he hit the turf inside the 10-yard line on the cut. Tom Flynn was there. On conversion, this is first down and goal to go at the 9-yard line. Michael Henney, Michael Henney to the 5, Michael Henney, touchdown! Touchdown for SMU! Southern Methodist 
Giants lead it by a score of 7-3. to three. Let's take a look at the touchdown. This play was set up to play before when the option run was run and pitched to Craig James. This time it looks the exact same to fake to Dickerson. You see McElhaney come down the line? Well, Pittsburgh took away Craig James, but that gives McElhaney an opportunity to run in the end zone as he breaks the tackle and crosses the plane for the touchdown. One further look, good decision here by McElhaney. You're going to see the Pittsburgh defense be concerned with Craig James. He's number 32 there. You see everybody sprinting there to cover him. McElhaney cuts inside number fun, Todd Flynn for the touchdown. And here's what it looks from behind the line. If you're the Pitt defenders, this is what you see. What are you going to do? Are you going to try to cover Craig James? You're going to go after the quarterback. Right here, you should have gone after McElhaney. That is Thomas in motion across. Dan Moreno. And it is completed up to about, I think it'll be marked 37, 38 yard line. The line has been so good in protecting Dan Moreno all season long. Pitts 5 for 12 on third down conversion. Moreno on third down. Second by Williams. Keith Williams at the 40 yard line. First and 10. 19 yard pickup. When Keith Williams is a zone pattern, he gets behind the quarterback and in front of the safety. The ball is well thrown. He catches it, keeps both feet in, and then he's out of bounds for a big first down. Thomas. And Thomas to the 35 yard line. Third down and three yards to go. Incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back out there. Ryan Thomas. Let's go. Moreno. And it is a first and ten. Taken by Thomas to the 21 yard line. First and ten pit at the SMU 21. A 12 yard pickup on the play, but there is a flag. Oh, but Danny Moreno had the patience. And you're going to see him after he looks at number 19, Barry Compton. He looking to his right. He can't get the ball to him. He shows some pages, patience the play, and gets the ball to Brian Thomas first for the first down. And there was defensive holding there by the SMU Mustangs, too. Thomas, 15, 10. Thomas to the seven-yard line. Russell Washington finally dragged him down. 14-yard pickup, another first and goal. Play of this drive. It started on the 26th. Down to the corner. He was trying to get it to Keith Williams, but it's incomplete. Pressure applied again by the SMU defensive front. Marino's trying to go with his right, good coverage. And then he steps around, around to his left. He's doing some scrambling. The ball slips out of his hand a little bit. It might be pass interference. You see Compton and Williams right there in the same area. You see Russell Carter knock, run right into both of them. But the call is the ball has to be catchable. Long setback. That's my call. Here's one more look at it. Dan Moreno again under some pressure. This time he steps out of the pocket when he probably doesn't have to. He scrambles over to his right. He had good protection. He's directing traffic. Number 46, Wes Hopkins, tips the ball right there. Goes up. 26, 23, Blaine Smith intercepts it. It's SMU 7, pit 3. Had a long possession that resulted in the turnover. SMU in the first quarter, 20 plays a fumble. They had it 9-25. Pit in the fourth, 13 plays, 5-35 by front, and they accept it. Pick up five yards on the play. Greg James carried. 59 left to play in the game. Southern Methodist leading Pittsburgh by a score of 7-3. Lindsey Nelson with Pat Hayden and Pat O'Brien here on a rainy day in Texas. Third down and four yards to go. The ball is at the 26-yard line for the ponies in a power eye formation. It's now to Dickerson. Goes out at about the 33. Tom Flynn. Bounced him out. First and ten at the 32. 
Still in that power eye formation. McElhinney, the quarterback. McElhinney's got it on the option. And they have McElhinney at the 32 yard line. Granted on 13. Hold him in motion. James carries it out to the 32 yard line, which will make it about fourth and 10. Then it's five. Over to Flynn's side of the field. Flynn at the 34 35. 36 37. And he's down there. It'll be first and 10 for the Pitt Panthers. A 34 yard punt. Four points in the ball game. Marino, the quarterback, gives it to Brian Thomas. He moves it out there to the 45. Marino swings it out on the screen to McCall. McCall undercut at the 47 yard line. Late hit on Dan Marino sets this up screen, sets up a screen pass pretty well. He looks to his left, and he dumps the ball off to McCall. Now McCall doesn't really follow his blocks. There's Paul Dunn out in front of him. He decides to cut back and go it on his own, but he does not make it as number 91, Clarence McDade, is there to make the play. And just a late foul, hit. Personal foul, defense. Number 74 is Michael Carter there, who jumped on him a little late. It was a costly penalty. They're leading in the ball game by a score of seven to three. Third and nine for Pitt. Long setback. Marino. Incomplete tried to get it to Barry Compton again. Foul. Fourth and nine. They are three for three on fourth down. I remember Dan Marino had a pretty big fourth down play last year in the Sugar Bowl. Didn't he though? Completed it to John Bond for, for victory. will be retired. First and ten at the 37-yard line for the Ponies. They leave it on the ground. Dickerson carried it. Got it up across the 40-yard line. This is fourth and nine. He needs this completion to keep a drive alive. The ball is well thrown. Dwight Collins does have to go down for the ball, but it certainly is catchable. At Kansas City, thank you all. And it's Dickerson, Dickerson, Dickerson. He got it up just near the 50-yard line. That may be the biggest first down that Greg Dickerson has run in his career at SMU. Now, one further look. People here at SMU are going to miss him. They've enjoyed him for four years and with good reason. All-time career rusher in the Southwest Conference. First and 10 at the 49. Dickerson, Dickerson, Dickerson. Picked up another first down as he drove all the way to the 40-yard line before Tom Flynn upset it. One second. It's him here has finished the season on a bowl game undefeated. Once time, they have beaten Pittsburgh by a score of 7-3. to three. There's Bo Spazio on the way out. Disappointment for him and Bobby Collins on the other side of the field getting the ride being led down to the turf now so he can meet with Boyd Spazio for the handshake just there. We'll be back in a few moments now with a look ahead and to uh, the elements in our post-game show as well. So stay with us. Final score, 7-3 to three SMU.